What's up, everybody? The show camera here, back with you for a non Days of Christmas episode number 17 special. This is the NES game Master Chu and the Drunker Who by Sachin. Let's take a look. And right off the bat, notice his stereotypical Chinese music. And the character himself is the uh, stereotypical Chinese guy, but <coughs> he shoots projectiles. And they. I don't really know much about this game, except that those yin yang signs are there to help progress you to the next level. I, now the graphics are kind of drab and boring, and the music is what really parks this game up, but you have a, notice down below you have a life bar and three lives, and a counter telling you how many of the signs you've gotten. And again, these signs can be found anywhere in this game, anywhere in this level. And mostly they're found in those little vases up there. You shoot the vases to get down that way. But the thing is, every time you touch something, you fall back to the ground, and if you get hit enough, you're dead. But, you get that invincibility thing for a little bit. <coughs> and the, uh, there's the best effect in this game. Whenever you stand still, the wind will catch Chu's code and actually make it wave. And those scrolls upgrade the weapon, as you see. I got a little spread shot for that just now. But when you die, the spread shot doesn't come back, you have to get it back. And I don't really know how often the scrolls come up, I think they might come up a lot, but... That spread shot is really helpful, it reminds me a lot of the spread shot in Contra. I can't believe I'm comparing Contra to a piece of crap like this, but no, that's the best reference I can make. Anyway, like I said, the uh, signs can be found anywhere in this level. I only found six of the seven signs in this run through. But the, uh, the thing I'm trying to get at here is this game, eh, it's okay, I guess. Um, not as bad as some other people make it out to be, but I really don't like it that much either. And I don't like that you can't really, uh, you can't really get on those vines. I mean, why are they there if you can't use them? <coughs> and the mu- just like the music in Bubble Wobble, the, er, excuse me, just like the music in Puzzle Bobble, this game music really gets annoying after a little while, and... Well, <coughs> I would mute it, but, you know, I had to use it for this review so I could show y'all just how annoying the music really is. You thought Puzzle Bobble was bad at music? This game is worse. But it's an NES game, what can you expect? Now, I know some NES games that have great music. Well, not this one. That was what I was, that's what I was getting at. I wasn't making fun of any NES game. That's not my job, but... <coughs> The one thing I do want to comment on before the end of this video, I would like to comment on the scrolling, though, because that is some really good scrolling there. You usually don't see that in my, many of the NES games. That's usually reserved for stuff like Master System games, Genesis games, but there might be a few other NES games out there that can actually uh, achieve scrolling, but for, for the sake of this review, this is the first one I've seen for the NES, and there's some really nice sounds here. But overall, this game is fair, and really, that's all I have to say about it. Thank you for watching, and we'll be right back with another unlicensed game review. Thank you. And right off the bat, notice this stereotypical Chinese music. And the character himself is the uh, stereotypical Chinese guy, but <coughs> he shoots projectiles. And they... And we are back, and this next one should be really familiar to everyone. Let's take a look. We're taking a look at this, in this segment, we're taking a look at Pac-Man, the unlicensed NES game by Namco. Now, everybody's familiar with the arcade and Atari versions, which is, this is a direct, a direct port of both of those. But this was unlicensed due to the Nintendo vs. Atari uh, lawsuit, I believe, is the reason why this was not licensed by Nintendo. And because Atari ripped off their Rabbit 10, uh, their chip, but I'm not going to go into the history, but... This is basically your basic maze game. And the main problem I have with this one is the same problem a lot of people have with it. The maze, this game is just too repetitive. The mazes never change. The music, though, is... Well, there is no music. And there doesn't need to be. This game is classic enough as it is, and... Well, <clears throat> this is just a classic example of a great arcade game turned into a decent port. I'm not going to say it's lousy because it's not. The Atari version was worse, actually, believe it or not, but... In this game, you're going to get three lives, and obviously, I'm not going to really explain, but the point is to eat all the dots. Not really eat all the ghosts, as I've done for years, but... This is actually a game of strategy, because if you run into the ghost without any of the 
bigger dots on the screen, you're gonna actually lose a life. So what you want to do is tread lightly around the ghosts and see if you can't fake them out. But, yeah, like I said, the just the fact that there's no music. Well, this is how this this is the exact taste of how it was on the Atari, and right there, I don't know why I didn't just go forward to get those four little dots that would have progressed me to the next level instead of going back up. Anyway, the graphics are simple Atari look looking like graphics, which is what we needed here. But that's all I'm gonna say about Pac-Man because everybody knows enough about it. Good night, everybody.